The Voyager Highway played a crucial role in the development of the Métis Nation. It was the artery that connected the people to the land and to each other. The birth of the nation took place in the Red River, which despite its name, is not just a river. It is a region that covered much of the southern part of the two Canadian provinces, the northwestern corner of Minnesota and a large chunk of North Dakota. There is growing recognition of the critical role that the Métis Nation plays in stewarding lands and waters. The lands and waters are the heartbeat of the Métis Nation, as they are intrinsically tied to culture, language, economies, and well-being. Therefore, it is critical to acknowledge and support the Métis Nation in their leadership role to tackle the combined challenges of climate change and biodiversity loss. The Métis are of the land, we made our living through the buffalo hunts, uh, you know, the making of pemmican, which fueled the fur trade. We were also heavily engaged in the fur trade. We were carters as well, freighters, you know, by Red River cart and by York boat and, and canoe. And so we lived off and on the land. And our people were very engaged in that kind of traditional livelihood and that kind of economy. The Métis Nation recognizes its traditional homeland in Western Canada and the colonial impacts that dispossess them from their governance authorities, practices and economies in relation to those traditional territories. The Métis Nation also recognizes the importance of revitalizing the relationship between the Métis and their lands and resources, a relationship deeply impacted by the colonial history. The Métis Nation further emphasizes the need to create opportunities for the revitalization of traditional governance and cultural practices, skills, and knowledge. The intention of Mamawi Uski Pamatsuin, an Indigenous Protected and Conserved Areas and Métis Guardians gathering, is to further support the historic and ongoing relationship of the Métis Nation to their traditional lands, rekindle their stewardship, and reunite generations by engaging with initiatives like the Métis Nation's Guardians and Métis Protected and Conserved Areas. I think we're past the being advisory roles. We now need to be in the management and the authority positions. It's time now that we work together. It's just time. We need to preserve the woods, we need to preserve our animals, and we need to preserve our way of life. While there is no single definition of Indigenous Guardians, they can be understood as Indigenous peoples exercising their responsibilities through on-the-ground stewardship initiatives on their traditional lands, waters, and ice. They act as the eyes and ears on the ground. The Indigenous Guardians pilot is being implemented in partnership with First Nations, Inuit, and the Métis Nation, using an individual, nation-to-nation -nation approach. It respects and recognizes their unique perspectives, rights, responsibilities, and needs. Guardians initiatives are important means to improve socioeconomic conditions in Indigenous communities. As well, they support capacity development, create meaningful employment opportunities, advance reconciliation, and conserve natural heritage. What good are rights if we have nothing to hunt in the future. Um, so if there's not going to be any moose, um, there's no point in having uh, lands and, and, and rights. Um, so we need to make sure that balance is there. As part of Canada's collaborative effort to meet its international conservation targets, an Indigenous Circle of Experts, or ICE, was formed in 2017. Its task was to produce recommendations and guidance on how to move forward in the spirit and practice of reconciliation. Members included a core group of Indigenous experts from across Canada, including Minister Will Goodon of the Métis Nation. The work of ICE was supported by the work of the National Advisory Panel, where the Métis Nation was led by the late Cliff Superno in his role as co-chair. 
This report in, in includes uh, two sides. One is uh, traditional knowledge from our side as part of the reconciliation, and then Western knowledge and science on the other. But the room we've tried to make there is to make sure that the Métis have a say or there's an avenue for them to participate in uh, what they need into uh, climate change into the future. As part of this process, ICE introduced the term Indigenous Protected and Conserved Areas, or IPCAs. It refers to a range of protected and conserved area approaches led by Indigenous peoples of Canada. In their report, IPCAs are described as lands and waters where Indigenous governments have the primary role in protecting and conserving ecosystems through Indigenous laws, governance and knowledge systems. Culture and language are the heart and soul of an IPCA. The term IPCA is a flexible concept that is meant to be inclusive, living and dynamic. As such, Indigenous governments, organizations and communities will continue to shape the definition of IPCAs as they advance their own initiatives. This gathering is one opportunity to explore and better understand what IPCAs mean for the Métis Nation. The Métis Nation believes that the implementation of the ICE recommendations requires additional attention to be paid to our needs. This gathering will help support the capacities needed for effective and meaningful co-management and co-governance of Métis traditional territories by sharing experiences, stories, lessons learned and partnership opportunities. It's an opportunity for the Métis Nation to outline their vision for the future of Métis-led conservation, including guardians and IPCAs. It is also an opportunity to have an in-depth look at the Guardians and IPCA initiatives to learn what works best for the Métis Nation with regards to conservation and improvements that will better meet the needs of the Métis Nation moving forward. We know the environment, we know our lands, we know what's best for ourselves and our communities. We have the ability to become engaged in a meaningful way